Qui bono, the principle that the ultimate initiator of an action is likely the person who stands the gain from the action. The expression qui bono is a Latin phrase that means who benefits. It is used to suggest that the person who has something to gain from a situation is the one who's responsible for it. I love this AI thing, it's fantastic. Heckler's veto, limiting an individual's free expression by heckle. Famous examples is that Jordan Peterson thing when the people got on stage and whatnot, the, I don't know, the Marxist group or whatever. It's the whole liberating tolerance thing is a good example. They use the heckler's veto quite a lot. All right, he says it's unsafe language. Do not share on social media. I'm gonna check. In the spring of 1992, the legislator was considering a bill that would have required parental notification before a minor could have an abortion. This is not inappropriate yet. The bill passed both, it's a kind of a dark topic, I guess. Actually, yeah, no, this is not what I'm looking for. Liberal-tarianism, a variety of libertarianism that prioritizes emancipation over maximal property rights and rejects minarchy. Dang. <laughs> is this just the Wikipedia entries? No, it seems like a combination of stuff, All right. The word liberal-tarianism was coined by Charles Johnson, AKA Rad Geek. <laughs> That's a sick nickname. Rad Geek, yo describe a merger of libertarianism and liberalism. Libertarianism has a, been defined as an attempt to reconcile libertarianism with liberal social values. Uh, Charles Johnson has described libertarianism as an orientation that values freedom and liberty and individual rights, but also a concern for the poor and oppressed, a belief in the importance of democracy and civil liberties, and the commitment to civil and social light rights for all, regardless of income or social position. <sighs> Aren't there also like the consequentialist libertarianism who believes that like libertarianism would not bring like all this good stuff, but I don't know. All right. Is that not the same thing? I guess this is more explicitly. I guess it's good to have very specific words. Some of the key goals and values of libertarianism are freedom, liberty, equality, democracy, civil rights, civil liberties, social justice, and economic justice. It is a political philosophy. Okay, my guys, this is repeating. Ex ante, predicted, forecast. Okay, I'd actually like to see this in a sentence. Uh, here's a good definition of ex ante, before the event. I like that. So the analysis of blah, blah, blah was um, conducted in the markets ex ante, so before the event. And I guess replace ex ante with before the event. And ex ante sounds fancy as hell. That's why we use Latin, because it sounds cool as hell, right? Oh my God, yeah, it just makes English sound sexy as fuck. In truth, there are no ex ante before the event, expected values, only hypotheses. Always be curious, always question. Yes, yes, and one is left wondering about the roles of modeling and data decision. Yeah, we need transparent data mining. We can't just trust researchers. They could be fiddling with the numbers or what are they leaving out, man? Uh, their reproducibility problem or whatever, dude. Yeah, man. Plain Jane. A young woman or girl of average or unremarkable appearance. Oh, what do you say about plain Jane? I don't know what this stuff means. This is some jargon talk. Temperature. <laughs> oh, here we go. Lowering results and less random completions it becomes deterministic and repetitive as it approaches zero. Oh, I don't care about maximum length. What, there's a plain Jane look that people go for, which is all about less is more? Actually, I do agree with that. The whole excessive makeup thing I'm not a big fan of. Maybe like every once in a while. I believe in the kiss principle. Keep it stupid. <laughs> Keep it stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, I don't know. Like girls just do lip gloss or something and then the, the basic foundation don't do the eye crap i'll get the whole eye crap eye crap just looks like you got like gunks of powder on your face that always looks weird or minimal eye crap you know like minimal i don't know catch to obtain something by wit or guile to convince people to do something they might not normally do that is a D, &D move what persuasion not 20 persuasion consumerism a materialistic attachment to possessions Many young people today are growing up in a culture that is very focused on consumerism and material possessions, you're saying the definition, that can lead to a number of negative consequences, such as a sense of entitlement. What, from having stuff or focusing on too much? A focus on appearance and status, a lack of appreciation for the things that really matter in life, 
don't pursue the mammon, uh, I don't know, what do you, relationships are negatively affected by consumerism. When young people are focused on getting the latest gadgets or designer clothes, yeah, I guess that stuff really doesn't matter, um, they may not be interested in developing strong, meaningful relationships. Why do you spend too much time accumulating wealth or something? Is it like an Adam Smith thing? Like, don't do that, pretty much. It's dumb. Yeah, you're going to die anyways. Why you focus on getting a dumb gadget for that temporary serotonin boost or whatever? Platonist, a member of the philosophical school of thought established by Plato, a believer in Platonism. Yeah, the eponym definitions tend not to be that great. Soda jerk, a person who works at a soda fountain. I doubt the AI will pick this up. Wow, soda jerk is someone who works in a soda shop making and serving drinks. Soda... Jerk. Is there any good images of that? I guess so. Yeah, like that 1950s thing or whatever. This is what I think of a soda jerk guy. Yeah. Oh, he's jerking it. <laughs> Self-cultivation. The practice of affecting gradual yet substantial improvements of oneself, especially through education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it have a nice farming metaphor there with that word or whatever? It's quite nice. Self-cultivation. Cultivating yourself. Also, it sounds like you're trimming your pubes or something. <laughs> All right. The practice of self-cultivation is the process of improving oneself through intentional effort and regular practice. The goal of self-cultivation is to reach a higher level of spiritual, physical, and mental development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self-cultivation can be achieved through many different methods, such as meditation, yoga, tai chi, and qigong. There are no single correct path to self-cultivation and each person must find the methods that work best for them self-cultivation is a lifelong journey whoops and there is no end goal the goal is simply to con continue growing and improving oneself i love this word a lot actually overdetermined i wish it was more for just psychoanalysis this particular definition hopefully it is i wish it was more uh, broad or general Determined by multiple causes in such a way that any of the causes on its own would be sufficient to account for its effect. The McGurk effect, a perceptual phenomenon where, I could say wherein, right? That sounds cool as hell. Where, when the, f the auditory component of one sound is paired with the visual component of another sound, and a third and different sound is perceived. You see, you need to see a video of that. You can't just hear someone read it. The McGurk effect is a perceptual phenomenon that occurs when the auditory and visual inputs to the brain conflict. The effect is named after its discoverer, cognitive psychologist Harry McGurk, who studied it in the 1970s. When people see a person speaking and hear a different sound, they often perceive a third hybrid sound. The McGurk effect occurs when the auditory and visual inputs conflict and the brain has to choose between them. Ooh, yeah, cool, cool. The effect was first demonstrated in a now famous experiment in which people were shown a video of a woman saying ba while they heard a recording of a man saying ga. Most people perceived the hybrid sound of da spillover effect. Economics, the phenomenon in which an economic event in one context occurs because of something else in a seemingly unrelated context. Bidenism, a quip phrase or aphorism commonly said by Joe Biden. This is a good way to make an ec um, eponym of any person's uh, surname. To say a quip phrase or aphorism commonly said by X person, you know. Trotskyism. The left-wing political philosophy named after and based on the ideas of Leon Trotsky that is characterized by international socialism, opposition to Stalinism, the theory of permanent revolution, and the theory of the vanguard party. Trotskyism and the Bolshevik party, 1923-29. Taken up by a number of civil parties, um, all professing to be the true heirs. We are pure socialism of Lenin and the October Revolution Party, which operated under the name in the USSR, was the only one founded by Lenin, and the only one that had participated... Wait, da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Trotsky believed that the USSR was not a socialist state and that the party was not a genuine Marxist party. He therefore argued that the party had to be transformed and that the USSR should be turned into a genuine socialist state. Stalin, on the other hand, believed that the USSR was a socialist state and that the party was a genuine Marxist party. Stalin therefore argued that the party should not be transformed and that the USSR should not be turned into a genuine socialist state. What? <laughs> Are you pure? <laughs> I'm so pure. Oh, uh, Jesus. Faustian. 
of or pertaining to Faust, especially in the sense of being willing to abandon one's principles or values in order to pursue knowledge, wealth, or other benefits. Pinochetism, the conservative ideology associated with the Pinochet administration, 1973 through 1990. Augusto Pinochet was a dictator who ruled Chile from 1973 to 1990. He came to power in a military coup that overthrew the democratically elected government of Salvador Allende during his regime, i.e. naughty government according to whoever wrote it. Pinochet oversaw the implementation of a number of policies that led to human rights abuses, including torture and murder, the classics, classic democide government stuff. <laughs> Cartelize, to have an industry controlled by a cartel. To cartelize is to form or join a cartel. A cartel is an organization of companies that agree to fix prices, divide up markets, or limit production in order to increase profits. Logotherapy, psychotherapy, a therapy that involves finding the meaning of one's life. Oof. Logotherapy is a psychotherapeutic approach developed by Austrian psychiatrist Viktor Frankl. The approach is based on the belief that humans are motivated by a will to meaning, in contrast to the Freudian claim that humans are motivated by a will to pleasure. In other words, people are driven by a need to find meaning in their lives. I prefer this over the Freudian. Actually, I like both. It's probably a mix of both, to be honest. Pleasure and meaning. This need can be met through work, love, and other creative endeavors. Yeah, same thing with pleasure. There it seems to be kind of intermingling these ideas. You don't need to, like, draw clear lines. This guy can't be right. I have to be right. My theory has to be right. Why can't it just, like, be within, like, synthesized, man? Frankl believed that the meaning of life is something that each person must discover for themselves. Yeah, I mean, maybe not must, but you can go for. Logotherapy has shown to be effective in treating a variety of mental health conditions, including depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, whatever. Yeah, if you find a meaning to your life, I feel like depression is not going to be a problem. <laughs> You're not going to be depressed. You'd be like, wow, I found the avocation I love. I found the thing I love doing. Are you going to be depressed then? Probably less likely. I don't know. I get depressed and my life feels like it has no meaning, that's for sure. Rogernomics, a portmanteau of Roger and economics, was coined by journalists at the New Zealand Listener by analogy with Reaganomics to describe the neoliberal economic policies followed by Roger Douglas. Ooh, neoliberal. That is a word that is defined in so many ways. I don't know exactly what they mean by neoliberal. Neoliberal is just like the, the mix between capitalism and socialism, the hybrid goal or whatever, with the focus on protecting the free market as much as possible, something like that. Rogernomics is an economic policy implemented in New Zealand in the 1980s under the fourth labor government. It is named after its chief architect, Roger Douglas, who was the minister of finance at the time. The policy involved a radical program of free market reforms, including deregulation, privatization, and liberalization which were intended to transform New Zealand's economy from a highly protectionist state-controlled system into a more open market-based one. The policy was controversial and was opposed by many on the left of the Labour Party. It led to a split in the party, with a group of MPs, including Douglas, leaving to form the New Zealand First Party. The policy also contributed to a sharp increase in inequality, as the rich got richer and the poor got poorer. I reckon there'd be a citation here if it was Wikipedia. Um, since the 1980s, many of the reforms introduced under uh, Rogernomics have been reversed, and the New Zealand's economy is now much more regulated than it was in the 1980s. However, the legacy of Rogernomics continues to be felt in New Zealand, and the term is still used to describe the country's free and market economic policies. Now, this person does not like Rogernomics, whatever that is. Leveler a person holding a political opinion in favor of eliminating disparities between the haves and the have nots. Cell membrane. Cytology, the semi-permeable membrane that surrounds the cytoplasm of the cell. Counterfactual, of or in comparison to a hypothetical state of the world. Counterfactual is one of those like intellectual words that make you sound smart that's fun to use in debates. I believe it's more complicated than that. If you look at this potential counterfactual, um, it's actually very likely taken to the ad absurdum case. <laughs> smart people talk. Counterfactual thinking. All right, I'll look up this term. This is actually an interesting term, but I'll do this on my own time. Saccharin, excessively sweet in action or disposition, especially if romantic or sentimental, to the point of ridiculousness, sickly sweet, syrupy. So any K-drama ever, pretty much, but I love those K-dramas to bits. Savantism, the condition of being a person of learning, especially one who's versed in literature or science. Human capital, the stock of competencies, knowledge, habits, social and personality attributes, including creativity, cognitive abilities embodied in the ability to perform labor 
so as to produce economic value. Mengerin, of or relating to Karl Menger, 1840 through 1921, founder of the Austrian School of Economics. Friedmanin, Friedmanian, of or relating to Milton Friedman, American economist, statistician, and writer, known for his research on consumption analysis, monetary history and theory, and the complexity of stabilization policy. Psychache, psychological pain. Paraclitate, to endanger. Breatharianism, the belief in or practice of living without food, subsisting instead on prana or sunlight. What the fuck is prana again? It's like prunes? I might even look up, it doesn't matter. I remember those people being wacky as balls. Bioinformatics, a field of science in which biology, computer science, and information technology merge into a single discipline that sounds really cool as a word. To analyze, to analyze, to enable biological information using computers and statistical techniques. Onioronautics, onioronautics, lucid dreaming, the ability to explore dreams. I cannot pronounce that for shit. Can Google pronounce it? Probably. Onioronautics. Onioronautics. Noctificant. Walking or wandering in the nighttime. Night wandering. Noctificant is an adjective meaning roaming at night. It is derived from the Latin words noctua, meaning night, and vacuity, meaning to roam. Lichnobite, a person who works or labors at night and sleeps during the day. Pluralism, the acknowledgement of a diversity of political systems. Miesian, of or relating to the economic analyses of Ludwig von Mises. Mono machia, a duel, single combat, one-on-one, -on -one, mono e mono. Entomost, last in a series, furthest away. Pharmaceutical, of or relating to pharmacy or pharmacists. Uh, the frickin' like eponym type definition there. Polygenesis biology, the theory that living organisms originate in cells or embryos of different kinds instead of coming from a single cell as opposed to monogenesis. Oh, so like mitochondria actually being part of the, like engulfed by another bigger cell or something, and they kind of had a mutual relationship and eventually become one thing. Probably, I don't remember biology. Topology, a branch of mathematics studying those properties of a geometric figure or solid that are not changed by stretching, bending, and similar homeomorphisms, whatever the fuck that is. Dialectology, the study of dialects. Yeah, study like William Faulkner. That guy writes like wacky, wacky heck. Yeah, look at this guy. Theodicy, a justification of deity or of particular attributes of a deity. Catechism. A book in question and answer form summarizing the basic principles of Christianity. A pantherpy, an aversion to human company, a love of solitude. Philadelphia lawyer, a clever, crafty, or otherwise extremely adroit practitioner of law. Fatalism, the doctrine that all events are subject to fate, or inevitable and necessity, or determined in advance in such a way that human beings cannot change them. Is fatalism often tied to some biological component, like it's a chemical thing that we can't control anyways and we just react to stimulus and whatnot? It's all on autopilot. That's wacky, isn't it? It's probably a mix, you know? We're partially free willies. I don't know. Orthopraxy. The right belief combined with the right practice. I, from the top down, will legislate what is orthopraxy. Orthopraxy. What is it? We had the board of disinformation. That's now going to be hot behind the scenes instead of, you know... <laughs> it's actually real. Oh my gosh. America. Yeah, U.S. is wacky. Demersion, the act of plunging into fluid, a drowning. Respicence, chiefly literary. Repentance, recognition of a past mistake, especially with a desire to improve in the future. Oh, I have a lot of regrets that I want to improve upon. Pulchritudinous, having great physical beauty. Theophany, a manifestation of a deity to a person. Deity, God comes down from the sky type deal. Militaria, military or police artifacts. Everything pretty much because of civil asset forfeiture. <laughs> Linguophile, a person who loves languages and words, i.e. me. Abdormition, the sensation of numbness that occurs in a limb when it falls asleep due to pressure on a nerve. Egregious, outrageously bad, shocking, this video is egregiously poorly made. Equivocal, capable of being ascribed to different motives, or of signifying opposite feelings, purposes, or characters deserving to be suspected. Solvagant. Solvagant. Wandering alone. Morass. Anything that entraps or makes progress difficult. Paleoanthropology. 
Anthropology, the scientific study of ancient human remains. Hot stain, a region of the world where safe drinking water has been depleted. Oh, that sucks. Ooh, that would suck. Oh, this is before I did the whole proper um, pronunciation, uh, punctuation stuff. The Lorentz force, physics, the force exerted on a charged particle, an electromagnetic field, aristocraticalness, the state or quality of being aristocratical, bolchy bolchy, leisurely, slowly, steadily, little by little, funkify, to run away in fear. Oh, this looks kind of good. Not for actual, like, shirt design, but I like how it looks in this. Yeah, as a shirt, uh, I don't know. A flatus, a sudden rush of creative impulse or inspiration, often attributed to divine influence. Toxic masculinity, feminism, those aspects of traditional masculinity perceived to reinforce aggression, emotionalistness. I kind of love stoicism, so I'm like, uh, I like being unflappable and stuff. Maybe I like some a little bit of toxic masculinity. And other negative qualities. I don't think that's really negative. I mean, having emotions good. I, you know, I cry during K-dramas and stuff, but I kind of prefer stoicism. But whatever, dude. Everyone has their preference. Pediatricophobia. A fear of having to take care of children. Yeah, I don't really fear of having to take care of kids. I would like to be a foster parent. That kind of symbolizes that I'm a functioning human at that point, though. I wouldn't do it now. I'm a hot mess right now. And I wouldn't want to have my own kids because I think my genetics aren't the best be like pure autism uh, like pump out autistic autistic kids if i have kids it just looks like advertisements kind of poor advertisement attempts i don't know what i was doing there acrasia against one's better judgment weakness of will wow what the heck is that <laughs> look at what happened there and i had some quizlet i think i deleted a lot of these like arbiculous living in an urban environment is a cool word but it was a really poor design at the time and whatnot do i have pictures no just the words great all right, that's it for the Facebook page. Wow, I got through it.